Good morning. The topic for this morning's keynote is becoming better citizens and better interpreters. That's a big topic. But fortunately, our keynote speaker is probably one of the most qualified people on the planet to talk about this. He's written countless and co-written books and articles, of many of which have become classics of interpretation. And he's also traveled extensively, including teaching in Africa, Latin America, and France. So, without further ado, here's Dr. Ted T. Cable. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been introduced with quite that flair, Dwayne. <laughs> that, was, that was quite nice. Well, it's, it's wonderful to be here uh, for many reasons. Uh, often uh, speakers, when they, when they speak at interpretation conferences, they comment on how it's very much like a family reunion. And I certainly feel that way uh, this morning. And it's particularly wonderful to see some of my European relatives, uh, metaphorically speaking, as some of you who I met last year in Italy. It's, I really look forward to reconnecting with you over the next uh, few days. The other reason why it's special for me to be here is that uh, my grandmother immigrated from Sweden to the United States, and so I feel in some ways like I've come home in, a, in, in some a small way. So it's, it's great to be here. Well. Uh, some years ago, uh, American award-winning author and naturalist Barry Lopez was flying on a flight uh, across the United States, and he was working on a manuscript, and the passenger next to him recognized him and interrupted him and uh, uh, asked uh, Barry Lopez for some advice. This man's daughter was just graduating and going off on her own for the first time. And he asked Mr. Lopez, what advice should I give my daughter? And Mr. Lopez gave him three pieces of advice. When I was asked to do this keynote on becoming a better citizen, uh, I thought about what I could share with you. And it occurred to me that the advice that Barry Lopez gave this fellow passenger would be uh, good advice, I think. Uh, and germane to the topic of becoming a better citizen and a better interpreter. So as I share these three things with you today, I hope that uh, they might ring true in your mind and in your heart, and that you might uh, uh, be inclined to apply them in your lives and in your profession as uh, heritage interpreter professionals. So the first piece of advice given by Barry Lopez, is to read. And uh, Groucho Marx, uh, some of you may be familiar with the 20th century comic in America, uh, he, he has, there's a lot of truth in this little joke here. Uh, a book really can become your best friend. In fact, nobody can fathom what goes on in a person's heart and mind when they read the written word. You alone read a book like nobody else can read that same book. I would read it differently than you, because uh, each of us would be reading through the lens of, and filter of our own experiences, uh, our own perspectives. And so reading a book is really different for each of us. But a relationship is built often between a book and the reader. And so in a very real sense, uh, a book can be man's uh, best friend. So why read? Well, there's uh, several compelling reasons why uh, reading is important in the context of making us better citizens and better interpreters. Reading, of course, opens our minds to new ideas, new perspectives. Um, it gives us new information. All of this stuff can be uh, obviously adding meat to the bones of our interpretive programs, but also it allows us to perform as citizens I think more effectively as well. It also adds depth. Uh, Barry Lopez mentioned to this traveler, he said, with a good book, you never touch bottom. And I think that's, uh, that's really true. Uh, it'll add depth both to our um, activities in our community and our ability to interpret. 
Reading also causes us to see uh, new things in a familiar way and familiar things in a new way. It has an odd effect of, of um, bridging this gap of familiarity uh, with both new and old. So, in short, uh, reading helps us become better citizens and better interpreters by giving us new perspectives, uh, new ways of looking at things, and um, helps us function better as citizens of both uh, our communities and of the world. So what to read? This is what P.J. O'Rourke said. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> Michael was just talking about dying during my presentation here, so I hope you're reading something good, Michael, at the moment. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so take a pause for a moment and consider what's currently on your nightstand or what you're currently reading on this trip. Uh, see if it measures up to that standard. But more seriously, advice that Lopez gave on what to read, um, one of his words of advice was to read different voices. Uh, if you read different voices, you have the opportunity of tasting really the fullness of all human thought and emotion. It will change the way you think about things. Uh, even if you don't adopt the perspectives of the author, it will change how you interpret uh, these various issues that you might be uh, reading about, just by understanding how other people feel about them. Uh, U.S. President uh, Barack Obama recently made the same point in the context of citizenship, not interpretation, but in citizenship, in a, in a recent commencement address at a graduation where he said, uh, it may make your blood boil and your mind may not be changed, but the practice of listening to opposing views is essential for effective citizenship and essential for democracy. And I would add, I think it's essential for good interpretation uh, as well to, uh, to understand opposing views and different perspectives. So read different voices uh, and, and your your life, really, and your work will be enriched by that. The second piece of advice that Lopez gave regarding what to read was to read, read the classics. You know, the classics have been around a long time, I guess by, by definition, maybe, and they tend to speak to universal themes, such as love and courage and family and community, and yes, even citizenship. And, uh, I think it's important for all of us to understand why they've lasted that long. Just think of the many generations that have found some of these works useful and inspiring. And I would suggest that uh, our generation, we might also find them uh, inspiring and useful in our work, and especially as we endeavor to become better citizens and better interpreters. So, in America, we have a saying, you are what you eat, right? And what fills our stomachs sort of makes us who you are. But I think uh, Barry Lopez would agree in many ways, uh, uh, at least in terms of uh, intellectually, you are what you read. The second word of advice after reading that uh, Barry Lopez gave this traveler to pass on to his daughter was to travel. Mark Twain said that travel is fatal to bigotry, uh, prejudice, narrow-mindedness, all foes to real understanding, and I've added there, I think, all foes to being a global citizen and all foes to being an interpreter, at least an effective interpreter, I think. Beyond that, though, tra beyond getting rid of those negative things, travel, I think, does something uh, more positive for us. Travel causes us to care. Judah Stone, a uh, novelist, said travel isn't just broadening, travel is burdening. Travel eliminates uh, complacency. And I think many of you understand this. Obviously, you've all traveled here. Many of you, I, I assume, are uh, frequent travelers. And isn't it true that we tend to care more about places and people where we've been? Uh, it's, I think it's just logical that that would be the case. I know when I'm reading the newspaper, if I see something about some tragedy in some country where I've been or where maybe I know some friends um, and some colleagues, uh, my interest is piqued, 
I'm concerned for them, I'm concerned about the place or about the people. If I'm reading about a tragedy in some country where I've never been and where I don't know anybody, uh, I, I'm likely to say, well, that's too bad and flip on to the sports section, you know, because <laughs> I don't have that link, that emotional link that was created by travel and by experiencing the people and the place. So the more we travel, the more people and places we know, and the more we know, the more we care about them, and the more we care, the better citizens and I believe the better interpreters we will be. So that's one way that travel, I think, contributes to this notion of becoming a better citizen. But I want to make a really important point, um, and that is, and I want to emphasize this as strongly as I can, that you can travel far without leaving home. Uh, just by getting away from the familiar in your own communities, you can travel by going to new restaurants, uh, going to new neighborhoods, meeting new people, learning a new language, uh, listening to new music, uh, seeing different movies than you otherwise might have seen. There's many ways you can travel without leaving home. And again, by doing so, uh, you broaden your understanding of different perspectives. Uh, you can speak more intelligently about different topics and issues, and it really enriches your ability to interpret by having all these experiences. You know, one of the principles of interpretation is to be able to relate to your audience. And obviously, if you've traveled, even at home, locally, you uh, are in a better position to relate to more people uh, from different backgrounds. The other way that you can travel at home is by looking more closely uh, and finding what I would call the mystery in the mundane. We're surrounded by, um, by all sorts of beauty and miracles right outside the building here. If you, there's a nice little trail you may have discovered up beyond the parking lot there, and that trail is filled really with uh, what some people may call mundane miracles. They're everyday miracles that are all around us. Um, Henry Miller, the novelist, said that at the moment one gives close attention to anything, even a blade of grass, it becomes a mysterious, awesome, indescribably magnificent thing. So we could go right outside now and travel more deeply by looking more closely at a leaf. We can travel through the use of microscopes, through the use of telescopes. Walt Whitman, the American poet, said that a mouse is miracle. And he went on to say that he knows of nothing else but miracles. And just think about that. A mouse is a miracle. And it is, isn't it? I mean, mice are amazing. There's, they can probably see better than us, smell better than us. <laughs> they're, they're amazing creatures, right? And so I think Whitman was right. And then Einstein went on to say, he sort of divided the world into two kinds of people, uh, one who sees miracles in everything, and everything, and the other type of person who doesn't see miracles at all. And, and I trust that many of you in this room would fall into that first category of uh, seeing miracles uh, all around you, uh, even without leaving home. So you can travel, uh, whether it's far, like many of us obviously have come many, many miles to be here, and that's a wonderful thing. But of course, there's many, many people, many more people that wouldn't have this opportunity that we're blessed with but they can travel uh, without leaving home. So if you can't travel off to Africa or someplace to see a rhino, then marvel at the wrens. And I'll add that when you return home from travels, whether they're just across the street or in your backyard, or whether they're across an ocean, the familiar will look different to you. It'll look fresh, and you'll remember what it is about the familiar that makes you feel so at home. So traveling across the street, in your neighborhood, in your community, or afar, promotes caring and compassion, these new sensitivities and these new understandings uh, help us become better citizens and better interpreters. The third word of advice and the final word of advice that Barry Lopez gave this traveler that was sitting next to him was to 
become somebody. Think about and find out what you truly believe and why you believe it. And then with humility, and that's important, <laughs> and then with humility, uh, interpret, speak from that foundation of, of beliefs. Uh, if you don't, just consider the alternative. If you don't, then you're nothing more than a talking head, somebody reciting the words of others, or you're a typist typing out a brochure. If you're not speaking from your heart, uh, uh, it becomes hollow, and, you're, and you just become another source of information. And again, going all the way back to Tilden, we know that one of the basic principles of interpretation is that interpretation is much more than just providing information, right? It's not just about disseminating information. And I would say probably the world doesn't need another source of information. <laughs> if anything, we have too much information now bombarding us, right? But what we need is people speaking from their hearts and, and uh, focusing on the meanings of places and of resources. So interpreting from the foundation of your core beliefs rather than merely reciting the words of others uh, will have several effects. First off, it'll give us both an air of confidence and a, um, a sense of conviction. And people in our audiences whether we're just talking about other people in our community as we act as citizens, or people in our audiences in our role as interpreters, they will be able to tell that. I'm sure you've experienced that. You can tell when somebody is speaking from the heart where they truly believe what they're saying and that it's important to them. They're not just reciting a script. So this idea of becoming somebody, of understanding who you are and what you believe gives you in a very practical sense, confidence and, and a sense of conviction, which then leads to more credible interpretation, uh, more convincing interpretation, and more influential, influential uh, citizenship as you can speak more powerfully to other members of your community. Martha Gellhorn, the 20th century journalist, uh, made this point again about citizenship, saying citizenship is a tough occupation which obliges the citizen to make his own informed opinion and stand by it. So even in the realm of citizenship, beyond interpretation, it's important that we understand who we are, that we think about that seriously, uh, understand why we are, who we are, and then act upon those uh, convictions of our heart. Gandhi uh, said, my life is my message. And I would encourage you to make your message your life and to make your life your message uh, as, you, as you perform as a heritage interpreter and as you perform as a, a citizen. So what might this look like? One, one thing I would encourage people to do is to develop a professional mission statement, if you haven't done so already, consistent with this worldview that you have, consistent with all your other beliefs, um, uh, your political beliefs, your, your theological beliefs, all those aspects of your life when they come together. There's two, it's, there's two reasons why that's, a, uh, or two outcomes, I suppose, of that consistency. One is, we talk a lot about being passionate and being a passionate interpreter, but um, but in order to have passion, you have to have a purpose, right? You wouldn't feel passionate about something that was meaningless or trivial, uh, or at least I think not normally. That, would, that wouldn't normally be the case. You see how passion and, and, um, passion and purpose go together. And likewise, if you have a purpose, uh, and if it's an important purpose, you're likely to be passionate about it, and you'll be more effective in carrying out that purpose if you have the passion. So passion and purpose go hand in hand. And uh, when I talk about passion, and I've written a little bit about passion over the years, uh, I, tend to, I tend to use the word uh, somewhat synonymously with enthusiasm. You know, I'm passionate, I'm enthusiastic, I'm going to be out there doing this. But it recently occurred to me that there's other meanings to the word passion in the English language, and they include suffering and sacrifice. <laughs> And I'm not sure how many of us have suffered for our cause, 
Um, but I know many of us, and, I, and I'm confident that many of you here in the audience, even more than I, have sacrificed uh, for your, the field of interpretation and, and for your purposes and for your causes. And uh, so I'd like you to consider that word passion in, in, the, in that light as well, beyond enthusiasm, but actually in the sense of sacrifice as you, um, as you communicate your messages and, and, and try to achieve your purposes. The other beyond the passion purpose phenomenon, the other reason why this is really important to become somebody and really to have a mission statement uh, uh, by the way, I, just to give you an example, these mission statements don't have to be real profound. They don't have to be long and wordy. Uh, if I'll share with you mine. Uh, my, my professional mission statement is to help people see beauty in things that are not pretty. That's what I try to do. So when I write about birds, I try not to pick the most grandiose birds, but I try to help people see the beauty maybe in... in, in, in uh, and more subtle birds, maybe less known birds. And when I write about landscapes, when I write about travel, not that writing about the beautiful mountains is wrong, but, but my mission is to help people see beauty in, in more uh, lesser landscapes. So that's, that's just an example. But uh, by having a purpose then that drives you and that helps you focus on your work, uh, there's a contentment that comes with consistency when it does all fit together, when your political beliefs fit what you do on the job uh, every day, when your theological beliefs fit what you do. There, there's a wonderful contentment and consistency in that. As you can see, Gandhi spoke to that as well, saying that happiness is when what you think and what you say and what you do are in harmony. And that's a wonderful state to achieve. And, and uh, obviously, that's difficult. We don't do that necessarily every single day. But that's certainly something to, to strive for. Carlyle said, blessed is the man that has found his work. And um, I trust that many of you have found your work in the field of heritage interpretation. I suspect you have and, uh, because you're here today and you've, and you've taken the time to, to travel to Sweden uh, to learn how to do your work better. The best interpreters, and, and I would imagine many of you here today can say, that interpretation is what I do because it is who I am. It's what I do because it is who I am. It's not about a program. It's not about a policy. It's not just a job. But we do interpretation. At least the best interpreters do interpretation because it is who you are. Now, this particular slide is pretty serious stuff. And I don't want to leave you with the idea that and paint the picture that an interpreter has to be a prophet in sackcloth and ashes, out there suffering, uh, crying out in the wilderness, or crying out for the wilderness, <laughs> uh, as the case may be. Um, obviously, we have problems, and obviously, we do make sacrifices. But the thought that I want to leave you with is that I'd like you to consider this quote by George Bernard Shaw. The true joy of life is being used up by a purpose. And you can read the rest of the quote there. But I would trust that as you consider making your life your message and your message your life and having a purpose both as a global citizen, as an interpreter, that you would find joy in telling stories and in communicating the message that only you have and that only you can communicate in a very unique way. I hope you will find joy in that and uh, in fulfillment as, uh, as you go through your career and as you go through your life. And you know, we all have problems, but I trust that we're not gonna all end up and leave here as feverish, selfish little clots, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so uh, so I, I, I wish you joy as you pursue uh, both citizenship and interpretation. So best wishes as you go forth to become better interpreters and better global citizens through a joyful life of reading, traveling, and becoming somebody. Thank you. Oh.